Yeah, I guess also the founder and the whole executive team, they must be very marketing oriented, right? So uh, my team and I, we generated more than $35 million to our clients in the last a bit more than four years. Uh, what do you think how, how they usually stand out? And let's say I have a beverage company or food company. How can I stand out if my product is, you know, I sell some kind of candy or energy drink and, you know, uh, not the product what is really different, let's say. It's a good product, but it doesn't really stand out compared to the other products. That's a great question. I was just talking about this with somebody, especially around this keto trend. There's a lot of companies that sell keto products and I'll meet them now and I'll say, all right, so what's what's your unique selling proposition? Like, why why is your brand better? And they're like, well, we're keto and we have this and we have no sugar. And I'm like, yeah, but that's that's explaining the keto diet. What, what's making your brand stand out? And they struggle because it's not really yeah. a brand, right? It's just they're, they're chasing a trend. And I would say keto is maybe on the downside of, of the trend and it'll be a new trend later. So I say without without a brand, you're just a commodity, you're just an arbitrage on Amazon. And that's a really good business. I think that's actually made a lot of people money. And I think that's one way to go about it. But if you really want to stand out as a brand that's built to last, like an Oatly or someone like that, you have to have memorable content that makes people want to share it. I saw Nick Sharma um, said something about this on Twitter the other day. I'm sure you and anyone that listens to you knows about Nick Sharma. He's like the, the guru of, of D2C. And he said that, you know, he really thinks that content for organic social media content should be stuff that people like literally like screenshot or share or like show their phone to their friend and they're like look at this this is so awesome i think that's how you stand out like the story behind your brand behind your people that makes people want to be part of your tribe and i think much more uh than you would think brands don't have that and they try to fix it by going to a branding firm i spoke to a brand the other day that's like a year and a half in they're on their third rebrand oh. you got to have it at your core first and then build from it you can't you can't sort of fake it it's got to be real and then it comes out as long as you put the media out there yeah i guess also the founder and the whole executive team they must be very marketing oriented right so uh especially if your product is let's say you know it's like the other products the founder and all of the you know executives, managers, they have to be marketing oriented because if they don't understand it, they will just go to the next branding firm and probably that will fail if they cannot communicate and they don't get it. You have to have a horse. Uh, so the horse being the brand that works. Like why is your oat milk better than almond milk or, you know, dairy? And then why is, and then specifically, why is your oat milk better and why should I be part of it? So you have to have a good horse. And then to really win, you have to have a good jockey on the horse. And I think the jockey has to do one of two things. One, they have to be an incredible salesperson because they have to sell to their employees, they have to sell to investors, and they have to sell to the world. So they have to be able to storytell yeah. and sell. And so if you're a weak salesperson, if I meet you and I've invested in some brands, very dangerous. Or you have to really understand like the numbers and the finance, you know, um, understand what makes investors tick, have relationships with investors, um, know how to get in the room and get a VC investor to write a check, which is also sales, but you have to be able to do those. If you're either one of those and you have a terrible horse, like the brand is just trash, yeah. it's a hard story because you could sell me, but I just don't believe in what you're actually talking about. Hey, Budai Nation, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you want to watch more videos like this, if you want me to create more videos like this, then make sure you go down and you subscribe. Hit the notification bell as well and you will get updated about every new video that i put out and don't forget our mission we don't want to see more boring ad creatives we don't want brands to waste money on uh, boring ads and uh, ads that just doesn't convert we don't want to see that anymore we want brands to become customer obsessed and really invest into customer retention. And finally, I want to show you one interview. If you enjoyed this one, then I'm sure you will enjoy uh, the next one as well. So I interviewed Ezra Firestone. This was the 100th episode of my podcast. And uh, I think you will see the link somewhere here. So make sure you check it out and stay tuned.